Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mike. Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having a great day today. And in today's video, we will be looking at a photo that I took recently. It's a winter photo taken with the DJI Mavic Air 2. And I'll walk you through the whole process of editing this photo from start to finish. And I'll try to not make this video super long uh, to show you how you can improve your drone shots, the winter drone shots that you take in order to you know, make them look a little bit better. I'm testing out a new audio setup today, so I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. How is the audio quality? Do you enjoy it? Do you think it's an improvement? Whether I should keep using this microphone? Let me know in the comments below. So here is the before photo. Uh, and this is a photo that I really like because uh, it's a top-down shot. One of my favorite angles is just straight down. I like the simplicity of the shot. I like um, that the, the road is in the middle and I like this car right here. I don't like the fact that we have a couple of different cars on the road besides the, the main one and I don't particularly enjoy the color of this car. However, we'll take care of all of that. So this is the starting point from where we begin our edit. Of course, the first thing we need to do is to crop the image. Uh, I plan to post this on Instagram, so I will crop it down to 4x5. Uh, when you do that, try to have the symmetry uh, working well and for, for that to happen, we need to place the road straight in the middle. We can adjust the, the angle a little bit and uh, these little lines will help us achieve better symmetry. Uh, so just try to make everything straight. Okay, I straightened it a little bit more and now we are ready to begin our edit. So as you can see, we have not a lot of snow. Unfortunately, in my city, we don't get too much snow. So uh, for me to have a very, very cold, wintry edit on this photo, I obviously need more snow. And I'm not going to fake more snow. I'm not going to add fake snow. However, I'm going to play with the colors in a way that will make it seem like there is more snow in the photo. It's a really cool trick. As soon as you start dropping the temperature down, uh, don't worry about this blue color. It's not going to remain like this. I'm just going to drop the temperature a little bit, increase the exposure, drop the highlights. This is something that I do on pretty much all of my photos as I try to underexpose a little bit instead of overexposing. So um, we can always adjust the, the exposure later, but for now I'll leave it like this. Um, I'm going to increase the whites a little bit because the snow obviously is white and I want it to be a little bit more visible. I'm not going to play with the texture, clarity or dehaze, vibrance and saturation. I will um, decrease them by a little bit. And already you can see that we have a difference in the photo just by playing with mostly with the temperature. Um, so for now, we'll keep going down and I'm going to add a slight tone curve. To do that, I will add a couple of points here and do a little bit of an S curve. This is something that I do on all of my photos and this last point, I will drag it up. This is going to make sure that our blacks are a little bit more matte instead of being completely dark. And I like this, this little touch and I think it works well. So for now, we'll keep going down towards the HSL tab. And here is what we're, where we're going to do a lot of work. I'm going to desaturate pretty much all of the colors. Well, not all of them, but most of them, uh, because we are looking for a very cold, wintry type of edit. So for that, I need less colors and I want to to give that emotion about freezing cold. And when you want to do that, most of the colors you're looking for are white and blue. So uh, we're playing with them. And I'm going to increase the luminance of the blue a little bit and check this out. As soon as you start doing that, it's like you have more snow in the photo. It's, it's a little trick that you can use when you don't have that much snow. 
Before we get any further with the edit, let's take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Now, being a one-man show on this channel means that I have to combine a lot of different skills so I can make my channel a successful one, so I can move forward, reach more people, and just be happy with the content that I make. So to do that, I recently took a class called Project Management in Real Life by Nikki Henderson, in which she teaches you how to set actionable goals, how to be more productive, and how to combine all of your strengths and weaknesses so you can create a better work environment for yourself. This is just one example of so many different classes that you can take no matter what you're interested in so you can advance in your specific niche and you can get better at what you do. So the first 1000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description are going to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now we can get back to those if we need to. I am quickly going to adjust um, the shadows. I'm going to increase the blues in the shadows by a little bit, maybe like so. And to counter that, I will add a little bit of yellow or orange in the highlights. Just, just a little bit, that's a little bit too much. So just a little bit um, to counter it. And I think that's okay. We'll keep going down towards the calibration. The color calibration is something that is very, very important when you are editing your photos. And we will adjust pretty much all of these sliders right here besides the shadows. I'm not going to use them for now, but I am going to add a little bit of teal in the blue primary color um, because I just think it looks a whole lot better. However, I don't like this saturation, so of course I will need to desaturate the blue a little bit. As for the green, you can always just slide the slider around and see how it affects your photo. And for me, something just a little bit more towards the positive side works okay, but I am going to desaturate it as well. And for the red, yeah, desaturate the red uh, or go towards the negative of the red and yeah, just desaturate it again by just a little bit. As you can see, now we have a very, very cold image. And that's the feeling that I'm looking for. However, I don't like the fact that all of it is very, very cold. I, I want to have a little bit of warmness inside the road. So for that, I'll use the brush and introduce a little bit of temperature inside the section of the road here. So what I'm going to do is paint over the road. And I think I'm using a, a brush that is a bit too, too large. But anyway, um, I'm going to paint over the road. And right now it's... Uh, decreasing the temperature, so that's why the road gets a little bit uh, bluish. However, we'll deal with that. And let me just see, if you click on this show selected mask overlay, it shows you uh, where exactly you have applied your brush. And that seems pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll, if you press Alt, you can delete some part of the mask. I'll just use this section to, to make sure that I'm not covering the, the trees uh, as well. And now I'm going to introduce a little bit of temperature. I will take this off. I'm going to increase the temperature by a little bit as well as the saturation. And uh, yeah, since we uh, lowered the saturation of the orange, of course, that makes sense. The orange is too desaturated right now. So uh, we will turn it back to to a positive value, right, like so, and as well as the some of the yellows. And already uh, we see some difference in the road. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to go back to this brush, increase the saturation a little bit, increase the temperature a little bit, and there we go, we have uh, a road that looks a whole lot more you know, more realistic and, and not as cold as it used to be. I'm going to fine tune this selection of the mask a little bit. So to, just to make sure that 
it doesn't get into the trees themselves. And now we can go back and remove those cars. And for that, we'll need to right click on this photo and go and click edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021. So for that, we can do a couple of things. Now I'm going to press Command and J to uh, duplicate my layer, just to make sure that I have a separate layer that I'm working on instead of the background. I'm going to zoom in. Now we have quite a few options on how to get rid of this car and it's just a matter of your personal preference on what you want to do. Uh, but here I am going to use uh, the Content Aware Fill tool. So I'm going to use to, to do this little selection here and go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. And if we go to Sampling Area Options and select Auto, you see this green color showing us that basically it will take information from these green areas so it can fill this area right here. And this is the little preview that we are getting um, from the, the content aware operation. I'm going to remove the car so it doesn't take information from the car. We don't want to have any artifacts into the on, on our selection. And I think for the most part, this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to remove some of these parts right here and we can see how this affects our road. I think it's pretty okay like this and we can see before and after. We have a little bit of shadow here so we can do the same thing for, for the, the snow. So. We're going to quickly just select a little bit of snow. So Photoshop knows that we're looking for more snow and not more road. And there we go. This seems perfect right now. Zooming out and nobody would even tell that there was a car here. I'm going to do the same thing about this car right here, the same type of operation. And I'll get back to you in a couple of seconds. Now what we'll need to do is change the color of the car because of its green color it doesn't look very very good so now we'll make a new layer and zoom in so we can actually see what we're doing and just paint with this red color that we've already selected just paint over the car uh, i'm going to set my opacity to about 80 percent and just paint over the car now you need to be a little bit uh, specific and you know fine-tune your selection here I'm doing it with the brush which is not 100% ideal but for the sake of the tutorial I'm just going to quickly go through it and you can be a lot more careful than I am right now however it does the job and it will show you what I mean Don't worry about this color being too saturated. We'll, we'll deal with that in, in a bit. It's not ideal right now, but I think you get the point. And I think that's pretty much it for, for the car. Now, of course, it looks terrible for, for, for now. So we'll change the layer style and we'll set it to overlay. Right now, it immediately gets a little bit better. So uh, I'm going to press Command and U so I can decrease the saturation of this color by a little bit and also the lightness. I'm just going to drop it down by like 10. And then what we need to do is zoom out so we can see the whole picture. And it still looks a little bit too saturated. So we'll just drop the opacity of this layer with the paint to something like 85 maybe or 80 yeah just let's just go for 80 and we can see the difference this little layer does now we can press command s to save the image and when we go back to lightroom classic we can see a new version of our image the saved version from photoshop now what i like to do is make one of these masks right here 
and use this little circle to create an, a little emphasis on my photo. I'm going to select exposure here from this drop down menu. I'm going to drop the exposure by just a little bit, maybe like so. So you can point your attention towards the car. And I'm going to desaturate the mask by minus 20, just so that area is a little bit darker and a little bit less saturated. That makes sure that your attention will go straight towards the car and the, that middle section of the photo. And lastly, I think I will uh, drop down the temperature of the whole photo now uh, by minus maybe five or six. And then I'll add a little bit of vignette on the corners, like so. And we have our winter edit photo finished. So here is the before, here is the after. As you can see, we have quite a lot of difference in terms of the temperature, the road, the color of the car, and of course the fact that we don't have other cars on the road. It looks a lot, a lot better in my opinion. So this is how I edit my photos. Obviously, it takes a whole lot more time and fine tuning them, uh, but this is just a quick demonstration of what I do usually so I can uh, create some of those photos that I post on my Instagram, which is the perfect timing to mention my Instagram. If you want to follow me at Drone Supremacy, you're welcome to do it. You tell me what do you think about this photo and let me know if the information that you heard in this video was useful for you. I really hope it was. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching it, for following along, and I hope it brings you more information on what you can do to improve your own photos when you're taking shots with your drone and get that winter chilly vibe uh, in your shots as well. So thank you so much for watching today's video. This is Mike from Drone Supremacy. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.